I bought these rigid panels to work with my Opus Mega One and B2 expansion battery. I'll tell you why I chose these panels and I'll show you how I built a scalable system. A portable power station like the Mega Series from Opus can scale with your needs and budget. I built this solar panel array that I can scale up to take advantage of the solar input of the Mega Series. I'm Scott and I can't wait to show you how it all came together. I have an Opus Mega One and one B2 battery. The Mega Series of the solar generators are expandable with additional batteries and solar input. So I can scale up my backup power system as my budget allows and needs require. My goal is to build a solar panel array that can work well with my mega system and eventually power various circuits in my home with a manual transfer switch. My Mega One and B2 battery give me 3072 watt hours of power. The combined solar input into the devices is 2900 watts, 800 watts on the Mega One, and 2100 watts on the B2. So I decided to start out by maximizing the Mega One input of 800 watts. Then later panel additions can power the solar input for the B2. This system is scalable in that I can add more batteries or even change out the Mega 1 with a Mega 2 or Mega 3, and I can add more panels. For every B2 battery expansion I add, I get another 2 kilowatt hours of battery, and I can add up to 2100 watts of additional solar input. To decide what solar panels to buy, I looked at the voltage and amperage specs on the Mega 1 solar input, and I wanted to get the most out of that potential 800 watts of input. The Mega One can take between 12 and 78 volts and up to 14 amps of solar input. Now ideally, I would find a set of panels which would provide 800 watts under 78 volts and under 14 amps. Now I quickly ran into an issue where I found that more than three panels in series would result in too much voltage into the Mega One. For example, EcoWorthy sells a 195 watt panel that has an open circuit voltage of 28.5 volts. To get close to 800 watts, I would need four of them. Wired in series, that would give me 98 volts of input for 780 watts of power, and that's too high. The same panel puts at 9.65 amps, so if I were to parallel the four panels, I would have 38.6 amps, which is too high for the Mega One to use, and over 30 amps of power would require an increase in wire size to 10 gauge. Even just two of those panels in parallel will put out more amps than the Mega One can use. So I decided to look for a higher voltage panel that had lower amps. I found a 200 watt panel from Renogy with their Shadow Flux technology. It helps make the panels more shade tolerant, meaning partial shading won't hurt the solar output as much. There are also N-type panels, which are generally more efficient than the P-type panels. The 200 watt panel from Renogy has an open circuit voltage of 36.5 volts. Obviously wiring four of these in series will be way too high for the input of the Mega One, but doing a series parallel combination wiring design will work. Two of the 200 watt panels will be wired in series, resulting in 73 volts. The panel has a short circuit current of 6.86 amps. A series string of two panels can be wired in parallel with a maximum amperage of 13.72 amps, which is under the 14 amps the Mega One can use. The most voltage each string will produce is 73 volts, and the most current generated will be 13.72 amps. This wiring configuration allows for the full 800 watts under the max voltage allowed and under the usable amperage input of the Mega One. Using two strings in parallel also increases the shade tolerance of the array, but I'm still under 15 amps, so 12 gauge wire or thicker is fine. I went ahead and got 10 gauge wire, who knows what I might want to do in the future, so that was an easy call. Now the mounts. I wanted an inexpensive mount, so I went with the EcoWorthy ground mount. It should just fit all four panels. It's adjustable and inexpensive. It is a rainy day outside, but we're still here in the garage working on the solar mount. I wanted to show you what we have so far. Basically the EcoWorthy upgraded solar rack. It's upgraded because of that center bar there that helps to support it. Aside from the fact that it has these legs, it's basically just Unistrut. That's gonna come in handy later because I think that I've made a mistake. I have my panels and they're about 30 inches wide and the length of this Unistrut here on the rack is about 120 inches. And that all sounds good, four panels, 30 inches, 120. I didn't take into account the, the mounting hardware that goes between each panel. So I think I may have to extend these side ones, these side things by a few inches, which shouldn't be hard. I'm um, just go down to the local home improvement store and get that done. 
Get a, they sell short pieces of Unistrut just like this. And I should be able to extend it if I need to just by a few inches to account for that. So we'll find out here in a minute. Uh, I went ahead and put it on a kind of a wood base for now with some casters so I can roll it around in the garage until I get it permanently mounted in the backyard. After what turned out to be far too long of a search, I was able to find a short length of the 14 gauge Unistrut and get that extended out about six inches. So it should be just enough to accommodate the panels with a little leftover. Then I repositioned those crossbars here so that they were in the center or pretty close to it. So now we're gonna put the panels on. Got all the panels on the rack now. I will say that if you can get it as square as possible before you start mounting the panels, it will save you some time and effort. Spend a lot of time re, kind of reworking where things were laying, but it's pretty close now, close enough, and pretty sturdy. I think it's gonna go anywhere. Eventually this will of course be mounted permanently in the backyard, but for now that's 800 watts of Shadow Flux Renogy panels. I'm ready to wire up the panels. Remember we're using kind of a series parallel configuration where I have two panels in series and two panels in series brought together in parallel. So in order to accomplish that, I have these Y connectors. I also have my two 15 amp inline fuses. Now you'll notice that the, the pigtails on these energy panels are a little bit short. They're fine if I just want to wire them into, you know, series. But if I wanted to bring in this negative to the other negative on the other end, there's, there's not enough length. So I went ahead and made a couple of extension cables so that I can just bring them together and out and then put my connectors like that. This is the positive lead of our series connection. Put my inline fuse on that side. And so here's the negative. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend these. Red for positive. And then bring this around here. All right, so this is now my end. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, so this is 400 watts in series, and this is 400 watts in series. Two 200 panels in a series, positive to negative connection, that if I were to connect this to the power station directly, it would make a big circle. Same here. But now I want to wire them in parallel, and so I need to wire them off. So that's whenever we take the two positives and the two negatives and we bring them together. So on the positive side, Plug these in. And on the negative side. All right. So here is my negative feed, and here is my positive feed with all 800 watts in both series and parallel. So let me push these out into the street, into the driveway, and uh, see if I can get any kind of sun on this overcast day. It is about as overcast as you can be without really having rain. So I'm gonna show you how to test the voltage with a multimeter. So this is just set to DC voltage. This is one string, so it should be around 70 volts, even though we don't have a lot of sun. So we'll see how many volts it actually is. All right, that's 70 volts off one string. All right, so let's, uh, let's put these together. We'll see how we're doing with the... So it should still be 70 volts. Let's see. I'm at 69 volts, 68 volts with both panels. So that's right where it needs to be. Based on my location, an angle of somewhere around 30 degrees is recommended to get the most out of my panels. You can find out the best angle for your panels by doing a quick search on the internet. There's lots of places that give you that information. The series parallel wiring I'm using allows me to maximize my panels with the Mega One, 
The panels are shade tolerant and each series string is shade tolerant as it relates to the parallel string. So you should not need to split them more, but I could run two panels into the Mega One and two panels into the B2 battery if I wanted. So let's get them set up. So I've pulled the rack out into the sun and I have the Mega One and the B2 set up just in the shade of the panels here. Eventually that'll be a more permanent situation. But I've got the combined solar input going into the side. Let's see what we're doing right now. Looks like we're getting around 550, 55 watts. It's not too bad considering we got clouds in the sky. I can't wait to see what would happen whenever I have this on a completely clear day. When I was testing this before, I was able to get 745 watts sitting right here, but it was just a little bit less clouds in the sky. So just to show you the importance of angle and pointing your panels in the right direction, all I did was twist it just a little bit, pointing a little more toward the sun, and I jumped up to 628 watts. Came out a little later and shifted it just a little more and the uh, angle of the sun's just a little bit better and I was up to 640. All right, just for fun, you wanna check the shade tolerance. Put up my screen recording right now. We're hitting about 627, 620 watts. So let's see what happens whenever I cover part of a panel. 455 watts, 457. What happens whenever I cover more? Okay, I'm in 140 watts with like half the panels covered. It should be cratering. 150 watts. Starting to build back up a little bit. Bring it back over. Just one panel, one panel out of the three completely covered. I'm at 223 watts. Again, we were at 600 before, so. And what happens if it's just the bottom parts? Let's see here if I can do this. All right, bottom part of two panels covered. Still around, going up to about 270, 267 watts. 300 watts now. All right, that's pretty good. Considering a regular solar panel would just be done with that much covered. So with that much covered, I am at 470 watts. And then uncovered again, he starts climbing. Showing 500 watts right now. Oh, there we go, now we're back up to 600, 618. Let's see again, make sure it wasn't a fluke. 482, 483. That entire panel, if it was just a regular panel, would be just be shut down at this point. That is great. Okay, enough fun. My 3,072 watt hours of power can run my fridge for longer than 24 hours. In fact, longer than 38 hours. With 800 watts of solar, I can recharge those batteries within a few hours of decent sun. As long as we have sun every day or so, I could literally run my fridge 24 seven just off this solar system. With the shade tolerance, even a partly cloudy day should result in some decent charging. In my testing, I have seen anywhere between 300 watts with clouds to over 700 watts when the clouds cleared. I can't wait to use these when the sky is clear. We should be able to run the fridge, a few LED bulbs, charge phones, keep the internet going, even run a fan or two. All off this system, with decent sun, I can keep this going for multiple days through a power outage. The next phase will include a transfer switch so I can wire the Mega directly into my home and permanent placement of the panels in my south-facing backyard. What panels would you choose for your Opus system? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to see the next phase or other videos about how to use Opus power stations, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And you can see other videos just like this on my own channel, Scott Link Media. Okay, I'll see you on the next one.